All right, folks, welcome back to the uh, Steve Malzberg Show as uh, we uh, await the arrival of John Fund. I want you to hear something. Um, you know, I'm, by the way, I'm on CNN tomorrow. I'll be on CNN tomorrow morning at 1030 in the morning, Eastern Time. I'm sure we'll be able to uh, salvage some clips and play it for you tomorrow on the big Steve Malzberg Show. Uh, but I'll be on with uh, Carol Costello if Carol Costello is on tomorrow. I don't know if she's in this week or that's just her show. And there's a substitute, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll be talking about the most egregious stories of the year. Now, I asked them what they meant by that. I know what egregious means, but I, I just wanted them to I, – I wanted to get a feel for what it is I'm supposed to be bringing stories up for. Is it – is it for, you know, how egregious they were in and of themselves? Is it for how I considered the media covered them? Is it for, you know, for the, the, the effects of those stories? I, so they couldn't tell me, so I just came up with, uh, with four stories. Um, actually going to talk about, if I'm allowed to, um, the Zimmerman trial and verdict and how the media used it to tear the country apart racially, how they went on for weeks and weeks saying, Man, this prosecution's case stinks. Every witness for the prosecution turns into a defense witness. And then when the verdict came forward and, and, and it was going to be that, it was going to be not guilty because they had no evidence, they had no case, as the media admitted all along, what? They couldn't believe it. It must be racism. The jury must be racist. Uh, Mind-boggling, but uh, nonetheless, that's one story I laid out for them. And I think I laid out, well, I laid out three more. We got the uh, Boston Marathon bombing, um, which we'll talk about. We also got the uh, tax on Christians, which nobody talked about all year, as our friend Andy McCarthy also listed as uh, the most underreported story of the, uh, of the year. And uh, I forget which my fourth story was, but you'll have to tune in to CNN tomorrow morning, 1030, and uh, check it out. Joining us now is our friend, uh, the one and only John Fun, National Affairs Columnist for National Review Online. Hello, John. Pleasure, Steve. Happy New Year coming up. Happy New Year coming up to you and Merry Christmas to you and all that kind of stuff. Um, let's let's talk about uh, your most recent or the, the one I saw from right before Christmas on uh, National Review where you, you wrote a brilliant column. And this was in the wake of um, the uh, Target scandal uh, or the, uh, the revelations from Target to its 40 million customers who use credit cards during a certain time period that much of their information may have been stolen and they're required to release that information under the law. Uh, they're, required re they're required to release the data breach. Yes, uh, right. the, the data breach. And uh, then you found another uh, a government program known as Obamacare where if that were to happen, they don't have to tell the people who might have been breached anything, do they? No, they've exempted themselves from the law and it's just appalling. I mean, every private business, if you get, if you're a customer and you get hacked, they have to tell you at least about it so you can change your credit cards or take other precautions. State exchanges, the state health care exchanges, several states have them. They have to, in most cases, tell you, but not the federal government. In other words, Steve, it's one law for thee and one law for me is the government's attitude. And and this happened at a at a, a meeting uh, back in March of, uh, of 2012. Yeah. They had a meeting on the final rules of Obamacare. Security experts showed up and testified and said, you know, you've got to include this warning, this transparency rule. And they said, no, we choose not to. Never mind. Now, th the reason why that's important is this: in September, when they were rushing to get the website up, uh, it was a mess. It was such a mess that the chief information security officer at Helen Human Suffering, which is what I call HHS. <laughs> Helen um, Human Suffering. I love that. The, uh, the <laughs> chief information security officer refused to sign off on the website being safe from hackers and from others. And then her boss refused to sign off on it. They finally had to go to Marilyn Tavener, who was Obama's handpicked director of uh, the website division, and she signed off on it, but none of the career people would. That is just incredible when, as you point out in the piece, 
Uh, you know, you couldn't find many uh, cybersecurity people or, or security experts when it comes to this that are willing to vouch for this. We heard them testify before co before Congress, um, and I remember the no, 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 no. There were one, two, three, four. Yeah, four no's when uh, one Republican congressman asked four cybersecurity experts, you know, do you believe that this is secure? And, in, 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 you know, the be-all, end-all answer, and they all said one after the other, no, 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 no. Uh, and, of course, we've had uh, um, uh, hackers testify before Congress uh, that, this is easily hackable. So the security, it's not as if anybody is even working under the assumption that it's secure in the first place. And then if you're hacked, if they get it, they don't even have to tell you. So what does this mean for the American public, basically, I guess, well, that they're screwed? It's not just computer hackers that we have to worry about. It's these navigators, you know, these hundreds of thousands of people that work for Obama-style nonprofits uh, that are supporters of the president. They've been paid to go out and sit down and hold people's hands and try to navigate them through the system. But they, there are no background checks on these people. Right. If they have a criminal record and they're identity thieves, they don't have to disclose that. We can't know about it. So these navigators are potential time bombs. They could become predators rather than navigators. Yeah, as, as again, during testimony, Kathleen Sebelius admitted when asked uh, in so many words, uh, uh, is it possible that uh, the, the person taking your information uh, is a convicted felon? Who, you know, and she said, yes, we don't run background checks on them. So it is possible. So, well, and, and this, this makes it even more bizarre. 2010, we had the U.S. Census. And, you know, we had hundreds of thousands of people hired to go count people. And all they did was count people. We had background checks for them. The navigators have access to the Federal Data Hub, which is the conglomeration of all of the data that is held on you, about you and your listeners. And no background check, even though they have access to this, all the vital information. All right, well, you point out in your piece that uh, Congresswoman Diane Black, uh, uh, a Republican from Tennessee, uh, has come up with the uh, Federal Data Breach Notification Act, which would require the FTC to notify anyone whose personal information has been jeopardized. Well, and so far, you know, she's getting going through the hearings, and we hope that it'll pass the House. I suspect Harry Reid will kill it in the Senate, and even if it were to pass the Senate and the House, I doubt that President Obama would be moved to sign it, because after all, it was his political appointees who killed the requirement that the government reveal data bre breaches in the first place. I mean, basically, this is complete and utter hypocrisy, and at every point... It's almost as if this website isn't a help to the American people. It's a weapon pointed at them. Absolutely, and that, that, that's another column that preceded this one that I want to talk about. Uh, but we're talking to John Fund here, a national affairs columnist for National Review Online here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, I, I, I think it would behoove, but then again, it's John Boehner running the show. Uh, the Republicans to pass this yesterday and then go to the American public and say, you know, let, 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 let me uh, not bring it up or let uh, Obama veto it. I mean, there's absolutely no reason under the sun for that to happen. Happen, and let, let the American public know that here again, Republicans, who not one of them voted for this, are trying to fix a problem here, and, uh, the, and the Democrats won't let them. Well, and as we know, you know, everyone I talk to has still had trouble getting onto the website, still had trouble getting confirmation if they did manage to get onto the website that the insurance application has been processed, having trouble getting confirmation that they have insurance. I mean, at every step of the way, I mean, the Federal Trade Commission would prosecute any website that operated this way yeah. for false advertising and for consumer fraud. Well, you, you are, in, in your column uh, dated uh, December 20th, uh, you know, I've talked about Obama uniting um, people. He's been the great divider here, but he united people who would have thought like Israel and Saudi Arabia uh, and Israel and Jordan on, on the issue of Iran, etc. Uh, but you point out that Obama has united the country, and the latest polls out today certainly, um, uh, you know, back that up again. Um, united them all against uh, him and Obamacare and the Democrats, and it's it it is uh, uh, they do view it as a weapon being pointed a, against them. Well, look. We need we have need to recognize that people are really being hurt by this. Lives are being ruined. It's up to the Democrats who are up for election in 2014 to break free of the White House chains and declare their independence and say, look, loyalty sometimes demands too much. Party loyalty, you know, it goes out the window here. We have to get something that works. And right now, I believe that we're going to end up with six, seven million people on January 1st that will have lost insurance and maybe one to two million that have new insurance. I mean, we're going backwards. If Obamacare was supposed to bring people insurance and lower the number of uninsured in this country, 
uh, we're going, we're, the clock's moving backwards. Yeah, no, the clock is absolutely moving backwards. Listen, um, my friend, as the clock moves forward, uh, we'll talk more and more, and I thank you for your time, and Merry Christmas again, and have a happy, uh, wonderful New Year. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Take care. John Fun, ladies and gentlemen, Newsmax contributor and also a national affairs columnist at National Review Online here on the Steve Molesberg Show. Now, I mean, you know, John points out in the column that the, 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 the first column that he wrote uh, uh, that we, the, of the two and uh, the, the second one that we've talked about here, um, by 67 percent to 28 percent, people want the law delayed. Uh, every demographic, 57 percent of liberals, 65 percent of women, 67 percent of those under age 35, 60 percent of low-income voters, uh, even African Americans, uh, the bedrock, as he puts it, of Obama's support base, now favor a delay by 48 to 47 percent. And, and again, the people don't even know what they're asking for, uh, for a delay in. They don't know what this law means. They don't. They still don't. I just saw a story today about taxes, Obamacare taxes that kick in starting next year. Uh, it's a never-ending cycle. This is the worst single piece of legislation in my lifetime, and I'm sure in your lifetime, no matter how old you are, on so many levels. On every level, the fact that it is a destroyer of, of jobs, of a redistributor of wealth, a destroyer of the best health care system in the world. I mean, I, I could go on and on, and we've talked about all this stuff, but people still don't know what's in it. I know most of what's in it. We talk about it. The average person, does the average person know what a deductible is? Does the average person understand what they're going to be facing here? Does the average person know about the death panels? Does the average person know about hospitals that won't be in included, uh, that you're going to now, that you won't be able to go? I mean, it is a train wreck. Train wreck was putting it mildly. It is a tsunami. A tsunami. And yet, they're, like, like John said, it's up to Democrats to break away from the White House and to revolt against Harry Reid in the Senate and say, bring this stuff up. We have to do, we have to fix this. We have to change this. We have to start from scratch. Sorry, Harry. Sorry, President Obama. I don't see how they possibly, possibly even run for re-election in the Senate if they don't take that path. But I see no indication that they're going to take that path, no indication whatsoever that they're going to take that path. Do you? <laughs> All right, folks, uh, we're coming back. I want you to hear some uh, some crazy sound bites. I love playing these things. Um, we'll play them for you when we come back. Final segment of the Day After Christmas show on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax TV and radio. The 